Do you want to play Escape from Tarkov, but you have nobody to help you? Does Tarkov make you scared? Does Tarkov intimidate you? Well, after you watch this video, you will no longer be scared. And you will know how to play Escape from Tarkov. You will not be the best player, but you will be a player. And Tarkov will still shit on you, but it might shit on you a little bit less. Let's jump right into this guide that I have given the name The Noob Bible. Enjoy. Alright, so this first screen that we show up on is your character selection. Uh, you can either choose between being a bear or a USEC. The only main difference between the two is if you play USEC, uh, rogues on Lighthouse will be less aggro towards you, but they'll still be aggro. But if you're a bear, they're going to hit you from way further away. Um, bears start with AK styled weapons, uh, USEC starts with NATO. M4s and M9s and things like that. This is totally personal preference on which one you want to do. Uh, this is the character screen. This shows you what's on your PMC right now on this left hand side. This right side is the stash. Anything you put in here you will not lose unless you put it onto your character. Uh, we're going to go to the overall tab in the top left. This just shows you your overall stats for the, uh, the wipe I guess. The only stat that doesn't reset is your account lifetime and your hours. Going into the health tab, this just shows uh, what how much health your character has at this moment. Say if you come out of raid and you didn't heal all the way, it could be like 390 out of 440 and you have like a right arm has 30, I don't know how to do math, but you can heal yourself out of raid as well, not just in raid. We'll go more into the healing system in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, this is just the overall view of your character. Also, if you hit tab in raid and it'll mostly, it'll come up with the gear section, but if you hit tab in raid, raid, excuse me, you also have all these other tabs still here and you can just go to health and see what's going on with your guy. Here's the skills tab. This just has all your skills and like how you're doing in them and ex explanation of what the skill actually does uh there's gonna be a link in the description for more on skills i'm not gonna go over every skill but essentially like strength makes you carry more weight endurance makes you run faster or run longer like the penalty for jumping isn't as bad there's a lot of different skills uh here's the task menu this just shows what task you have active um, it'll have a percentage like 50% if you have 50% of the tasks done. Also on this right hand side, if there's a task that you have to go and find something and pick it up, it'll show up in this top right section. Like if you have to pick it up and go to another map and stash it somewhere, you can pick it up here, get out of raid and put it down here. And next time you go into the raid, it won't be on you. So if you die, you won't lose it. So it's a good thing to use if you're going into a raid, getting an item and then maybe saving it for later to do it with your buddies so you don't get smacked and lose the item and have to go get it again. So if you wanna do it later, you just put it in your hideout stash on the bottom. All right, heading back to the gear tab, uh, we're gonna go over just like the four little icons down here at the bottom of your character. The first one is weight. Everything is in kilograms in this game. So get the fuck over it and figure out how much kilograms is. But basically, every time you go into a raid, you're pretty much gonna be overweight. Well, almost overweight. Uh, once you get to like the 40, 45-ish kgs, you're gonna be starting to slow down like pretty good. Uh, so try and keep it under 40 to or yeah, like under 40, but you're gonna go over 40. Um, that just is bound to happen. Uh, here is your butt pouch right here. It's called a butt pouch or container or pouch. I just call it the butt pouch. Anything you put in this, you will not lose. So if I go into a raid right now and I die, I'm losing this AK, this headset, all this shit, except for what's in my alpha container. If you get something you wanna keep, and you might wanna put it in your alpha container, or you can put like meds in your alpha container, 
so you don't keep losing all your meds that's what i would do uh i would put my meds in my alpha container and then like shitty meds that i don't really care about in my pockets but yeah that's a quick explanation of the butt pouch uh if you go into a raid and you need to find something for a quest that has to be found in raid there will be well if you find something in raid there's going to be a white check mark at the bottom right of the item so it'll be right here if you go into raid and there's a yellow check mark there that means you need it for your quest that you actively have if you grab one of the like an iskra for example that you need for your quest and you put it in your alpha container and you die you lose that check mark so it's no longer found in raid before we continue i just wanted to show all the medical supplies uh, the only thing that's not on here is the painkillers but i've put a description next to each item and what the item looks like and also categorized it into what type of item it is uh, feel free to just screenshot this or if I can I can put a link to it in the description somewhere But yeah, this is all the items you need to know about when it comes to medical uh, We went over the health a little bit the max health is 440 uh, Another thing I forgot to mention is your limbs like your legs your arm your head Well, I, I don't I guess he a head is a limb. I don't I don't know I guess I don't, I'm fucking dumb, but these also, when you're in the raid, this little skeleton will be in the top left of your screen. And if you get shot in the arm, the left arm, for example, and it takes just a little bit of health, it'll turn the outline of this arm to yellow. And if it loses all of its health, it'll turn black. Once a limb is blacked out, you get a penalty applied to you for it being blacked out. So if your legs are blacked out, you're gonna walk slow as fuck. You can't sprint unless you're on a painkiller. And if you are on a painkiller, it's gonna hurt you to sprint. Um, and the only way to fix a blacked out leg is with a surgery kit. Um, if your arms are blacked out, your aiming is going to be dog shit. You're not gonna hit a fucking thing unless you are just uh, single firing. Only way to fix that, surgery kit. Stomach, if your stomach gets blacked out, your food and energy will rapidly decrease. And once those hit zero, you're going to lose health rapidly. Not a good situation to be in. If your thorax blacks, thorax blacks out, you are going to die immediately. And if your head blacks out, you're dying immediately. So order of importance based off, well, the order of how important whatever one is is based off the situation that's going on but don't want to lose your head don't want to lose your chest don't want to lose your stomach if you lose your legs fucking pop a painkiller run the fuck away surgery that shit and then arms all circumstantial but i mean you don't want to be running around with fucking blacked out limb all right next on the list is your hydration and energy so when you go into raids, your hydration and energy are going to be going down at a pretty slow rate. Um, but when you're in a raid and you see like food and water, you always want to be drinking and eating that shit. Not only because it'll raise your energy and your hydration, but there's a skill that will raise when you eat. Your metabolism will go up. It's always better to drink and eat food while you're in the raid and not in your stash because you don't gain any XP while it's in your stash. But if you drink it while it's in a raid, you'll gain XP. So that's just something to think about for like min maxing. All right, now we're going to go over some quick key binds of uh, like how to move items quickly. Uh, so for example, this rip stop to rotate it, you just pick it up, left click, pick it up, press R and it'll rotate it. So you can rotate items however you need. You can even rotate one by one items, but that's pointless. I don't know why you would do that. Uh, you can also stack bags on top of each other. So if I have a bag like this and this bag is equal in container size to this one, and I have like 
300 of the same bag i can stack it 300 times as long as there's nothing in it so even with this bag i can open it up and throw this rig in it and this gun so now i have a bag another bag a rig and a gun and inside the rig i can put ammo into it like magazines or pistols or this vodka anything can go into rigs as long as it fits uh, another thing to make your life easier for moving items around is control left click will move an item to your inventory this is really useful for when you're trying to loot uh, like a body inside of a raid uh, you want to spend the least amount of time as possible looting a body because that's when you're most vulnerable because you don't know what the fuck's going on around you and you can only rely on your hearing and the audio in Tarkov is dog shit. So you don't wanna be looting for longer than you have to be. If you wanna throw grenades uh, and just by pressing G, you wanna make sure that the grenade is either in your tactical rig or in your pockets. If it is in your backpack, you cannot press G and throw the grenade. Also a new thing that has been added pretty recently you can click on this little tab of like what it says it is and you can equip whatever shit you have from anywhere in your stash. So if this headset that I just equipped was buried into 4 million bags, I can just click this and it'll grab it out of there. Uh, same for every other thing now. Um, backpack, tactical rig, you can select whatever one. Uh, that's just a, a quick thing that they added. They also added uh, presets. And you can create your own presets now. If you look at the weapon, right click inspect, it'll tell you at the top what the weapon is and what the ammo it takes. It also tells you right here at the top right of the fucking square what weapon it is and the ammo. Uh, the magazines, right click inspect, it'll tell you what uh, ammo it takes if you go to the rounds right click it'll tell you what ammo it is or you can like unload this magazine for example click on this and it'll light up green of where this ammo can go into so if this lights up green put it there and say you have a gun with no magazine in it and you don't know what mags go in it if it lights up green it takes the magazine but there's certain circumstances with certain ammo types that will fuck you over and show up green and then you'll get in the raid and it'll tell you that you cannot fire this ammo. Uh, I would just double check that the ammo on the weapon is the same that is going into it. All right, I already have a feeling that this uh, it's gonna be a long ass video, so I'm trying to hurry. Uh, if you have a weapon and you want to reload it and raid, your magazines do not need to be in your backpack, they need to be in your rig or in your pockets. If you have a rig that, say, only has these four slots and they're all full with magazines, and you go to reload, your magazine that's in your weapon is gonna drop on the floor. But if you have one slot open all you need is one slot open and it'll put your magazine in that slot and then take this one and put it in all right coming out of here and going into the trading tab these are all your different traders uh i'm not going to go into super duper detail on which one is what proper he sells ammo weapons ak styled weapons magazines some fucking clothing and shit therapist that's food and meds and the scab junk box. You're going to need that uh, early on. Fence sells a bunch of random shit from scabs. Skier sells ammo, weapons, attachments. Beastkeeper, all his shit is in USD. There's three different currencies on this game. There's USD, Euros, and Rubles. You can see that at the top right underneath your name. I have 500,000 Rubles, zero Euros, and zero dollars. You can convert uh, shit to like rubles to USD right here. 
Um, you just type in how much you want. I want a thousand or a hundred USD, fourteen hundred rubles. There you go. Now I can buy a fucking tourniquet. Uh, by the way, this cat tourniquet is faster than the S March. Uh, like use time, it's three seconds to use. The S March is five. Uh, all his shit is USD and it's NATO style weapons. So M4s, MP5s. Fucking, if you're an American or UK, well, probably American, all the guns you know what the fuck they are, pretty much. Uh, mechanic sells uh, attachments, more NATO styled weapons, and a little bit of magazines, some ammo. Ragman is the clothing guy, so you can buy armbands if you're playing with your homies, uh, helmets rigs fucking backpacks and then jaeger um i can't really remember off the top of my head without looking at it but he sells more weapons ammo uh attachments i think you unlock jaeger at level two uh once you hit level two you get a quest from well Fuck it, I'll go into quests right now. So the the traders offer quests. So for prep, you go from trading to task, and then a quest will show up right here. You hit accept, and then it shows you what quests you, or what you're supposed to be doing in this quest. So eliminate five scavs anywhere, um, and obtain MP one through three shotguns. Uh, and then for therapists, you have a quest at level one, find three Salewas and hand them over. So you need three Salewas found in raid and hand them over to her. And I think this is just a event quest. But yeah, once you hit level two, you'll get a quest for mechanic for gunsmith part one. You'll click it, accept it, and then another quest underneath it i can't remember the name of it but you click that accept and once you complete that quest you're gonna have to go to woods grab a letter it, survive the raid turn it back into a fucking mechanic and then complete the quest you'll get jaeger unlocked once you get jaeger unlocked you if you don't have your mp150 or 133s already you can buy two from jaeger and turn them into proper uh yeah that's a quick as fast as I fucking can on task. Um, do task. They're good as fuck. Get good rewards. Good XP. If you don't know what the fuck you want to be doing or need to be doing on Tarkov, besides surviving raids, start working on quests because it'll actually give you something to work towards than, other than just going into a raid, getting fucked, and then going into another raid, getting fucked, and not having a goal because you're just running around like a dumb fuck. Um... Yeah, that's task. Another quick thing at the main menu, if you want to add friends, you go to messenger at the bottom, hit friends, type in their name and then add them. And then in here, this will be a screen that you receive quest rewards. So if I did a quest for Prapper, it'll say get next to like whatever his fucking message is and you could hit get or receive all at the bottom. It's up to you. And then if you want to play with a friend after you added them, you go to this bottom left next to hideout, invite to group, invite them, and then continue from there. So continuing on from there, we're going to now go to how to get into a raid. Um, so, well, actually, I'm going to explain Scav really quick. All right, scavs are characters that Tarkov gives you like every 30 minutes or something. The time limit goes down the more you upgrade your stash. Uh, but they give you weapons and shit to go into a already pre-existing raid. So like a normal raid time for customs or something is like 40 minutes. The raid, you'll get into the raid and it'll already be like 20 minutes in. The overall goal of a scav is to get loot and get out. You do not kill other AI scavs. You don't kill other player scavs. The only thing you can kill as a scav is a PMC. But, not saying you can't kill another scav, but if you kill another scav, your scav rep goes down 
and eventually if your scab rep goes low enough the ai scabs will be aggro to you immediately if a player scab shoots at you first and hits you then you can kill them only if they shoot you and hit you so if they start aiming at you and shit don't fucking shoot them but if they hit you and you're still alive because they don't fucking dome you lay that like lay that motherfucker out and move on so don't kill scabs players or ai kill pmcs loot and get out each time you extract as a scav you get 0.01 scav rep and the max scav rep is like 6.0 so doing the things i said before killing betrayed like killing player scavs that attacked you gets you more scav rep Killing PMCs gets you more scab rep. Uh, there's a, a bunch of other things. I'll put a list on the screen of what uh, extracting on a PMC through a vehicle extract gets you uh, scav rep. There's a lot of things. The higher the scav rep you have, the better gear you spawn into a raid with. And eventually you can like recruit the AI scabs to follow you. And there's a ton of shit on scabs. I'll probably link a video to a scav guide scaving is for making money and that's pretty much it pmc this is your main character uh so if you want to play on your main character you go pmc and here are all the maps i'm not going into detail on all the maps but streets if you have a shitty computer it's gonna lag like a motherfucker interchange a lot of pvp um good map customs also a lot of pvp and a lot of the early quests are on customs so you'll be on this map a lot factory is strictly pvp smallest map in the game if you go here it's for pvp woods good map in my opinion uh good for getting loot and not seeing too many people uh reserve is a good map for loot if you go down into the bunkers, there's uh, raiders there, and you can get some good weapons off of them. Lighthouse has the rogues and very, very good loot. And Shoreline, it's a love or hate kind of map. The uh, resort in the middle is pretty good. Everywhere else sucks fucking cock. Lab, you have to have a labs card to even play on the lab. If you're brand new and you get a labs card, uh, play lab, I don't even know. Yeah, play lab in offline mode and just see what it's like. But lab is, uh, there's a lot of hackers there, unfortunately. And the AI there are hard as fuck. All right, once you choose your map, there's a uh, two different times. The raids are 12 hours apart, so right here, 1500, that's 3 p.m. And 0300, or 0330 is uh, 330 in the morning. Choose your map, choose your time. Uh, there's an offline mode, so if you wanna play offline, enable this. If you play offline, you will not lose anything that you bring in, and anything that you take out, you don't get. So if you loot something and think you're gonna get to use it, uh, you're mistaken because all that shit does not go anywhere it disappears but anything you take in you keep on you so like if I bring in 1 million rubles for some dumbass reason I'm not gonna lose it unless well actually I don't know if you lose it if you drop it on the ground but I'm pretty sure you don't lose it at all uh, enable practice mode game settings you can change the weather conditions but not really it's just random AI mount, uh, you can do like high, never do horde because your computer will explode, especially on factory. I don't know about horde on any other map. Uh, AI difficulty, I would just keep it as, as an online. I wouldn't go medium or easy because you're gonna gain uh, fake confidence or there's a word for it. Uh, I would keep it as an online and just accept the brutal life that you chose to live. You can enable bosses so you can see how the bosses are and how to kill them. I don't, I've never done scab war and then tag and curse. All the scabs will come sprinting at you and will fuck you up. Uh, so that's offline mode. 
And the next screen is the insurance screen. Here you can insure your items. So all this shit I have on me, I can insure for 25,000 rubles. The way insurance works, if you insure it, bring it into the raid, die, and nobody picks it up, so player scav or PMC, nobody picks it up and the raid timer ends after you die, you will get it back between 20, I'm pretty sure it tells you. I'm pretty sure it's, yeah, yeah, right here. Return time, 24 hours to 36 hours. You can insure either through Prapper or Therapist. I always go Prapper, but with Therapist, you get it back faster, but the chances of you getting it back depending on what it is, is pretty like low. I honestly would suggest ensuring your headsets like all the time. And if it's shitty armor and you're kind of broke, like if you're running budget gear because you don't have a lot of money, ensure your headset, ensure your armor, ensure your helmet. If it's a really budget weapon, ensure that like a SKS or, I mean, SVT is pretty sick, but the SVT, if it's a budget weapon, I would insure it. Budget rig, insure it. Small backpack, insure it. It'll just save you so much money in the long run. A lot of people say that it's a scam, but I've gotten so much bullshit back. Also, another thing you can do, say you go in with all this shit and you kill a loaded fucking PMC that has like uh, contact fours, a good ass helmet, level five body armor, a kitted out M4. You can go into a bush or anywhere you think nobody's gonna check, drop all this shit, and then pick up their shit, leave the raid, and then the next day, I guarantee you, unless there's somebody cheating or you just didn't hide it that well, you will get all the shit you drop back and people just call that insurance fraud which that's pretty much what it is um that's just another tip uh next all you do from here is hit ready up you can also look for groups in this section i wouldn't do that though uh but here once you hit ready it'll start loading into a raid all right so we're now in a raid i'm gonna go over some quick key binds that uh will help you out uh, if you hit alt t you will check how much ammo is in your magazine. Uh, B as in Bravo will switch your fire selector. So if you hit it once, full auto, hit it again, single fire. Uh, C is to crouch and stand up. Uh, X is to lay down. A, another good one is, oh, R is to reload. I didn't mean to do that. Double tap Z and you drop your bag quickly. So say you kill somebody or like a scav and you uh they have a you notice they have a backpack on them you can drop your bag grab theirs bring it over to your bag where it's in a safe area and then sort the loot like that uh grenades is g i forgot to bring a grenade but if you hit g and it's in your pockets or your rig a grenade will come out if you hit left mouse button while the grenade is out it is a overhand throw and if you hit right mouse button, it's underhand. So underhand would mean you're not throwing it that far. Another thing, you can keybind your meds. So if you hover over this AI2, you can hit four on your keyboard. Five, six, seven, six. I'm fucking it up here. Seven. So now if I get shot, I can hit five and bandage really quick. Um, and so on and so forth. I mean pretty simple all right so you notice on the top right when you go into a raid that it shows you your extractions and how much time is left in order to get that to come back up you just double tap o uh, i would suggest just changing the key bind so it's just one tap of o but that's it shows you where your extracts are and how much time is left uh learning the extracts just pull up map genie have it on another monitor or your phone and that's it uh a lot of this stuff i can't teach you you just have to learn through um playing the game 